Hey guys, welcome back to Seller Sessions. We bring back Brian Bowman. How you doing, Brian? I'm doing amazing, man. Excellent. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Excellent. Right, so Brian, we're going to cover uh, Facebook again, aren't we? This is part two. We it, may, it may roll into part three. Um, and in this session, we're going to focus on three key points, which is grabbing the, uh, the attention of the prospect, building the rapport, and also getting them to click. But let's kick off why does most commerce ads fail? Anything you do, whether you provide information or physical products, whatever it is, you have to serve before you ever sell. You have to give before you ever ask. And a lot of that starts with building some kind of connection, some kind of rapport. Um, and we'll talk about how to do that. But you also want to, we also want to make sure that like you don't do the complete opposite, which is just go straight for the ask uh, because it just it doesn't convert, especially on a disruptive advertising platform like Facebook. People are not going out and searching for you, right? So, I mean, you've talked about this a lot, Danny, but if you're on Amazon, like that is complete buyer intent. Almost nobody is going to do, um, well, I shouldn't say nobody. I, I don't want to have big generalities, but I think we can all agree people who go on Amazon, their credit cards on file, most likely have buy, a lot of buyer intent, right? Google can be like that. It can also be people doing research. So if we have Google PPC or or sponsored products, like people are expecting, they're already kind of coming in to buy. So if if someone types in, you know, best, I don't know, best coffee mug, we can have an ad like looking for the best coffee mug on a headline ad and people will click and 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 are gonna probably convert. If you are, if you take that approach on like a Facebook platform, it's just not going to work because people are in there. They're doing their thing, right? They're they're looking through. They're looking family, friends, posts, and then all of a sudden your ad comes up. If your ad comes in and it doesn't, it doesn't have like a social component or a social aspect, you're just going to like piss people off. That's all it's going to do. And the best way I can explain this, um, it's it's interesting that people do this with physical products. So it's like if if it's this thing that we're going to sell like nine out of 10 ads that I see from students or anyone in, in Ecom Underground when they when they bring it up, it, it'll it say like, you know, get 50% off this pen, click here today to save, and it'll have like a banner, you know, buy now, a, a corner banner or a banner across the top. And it's just saying like, I have an I have an awesome pen here, buy it now. And then what happens is people, they, they try 90% off, 95% off. And it's like the ads don't convert. They're not making any money on it. The whole thing just kind of fails and they basically give up on Facebook. They're like, oh, it doesn't work for physical products or whatever. Um, and the problem is it's not as obvious when you see it with like a pen. That seems kind of what you would do. You're selling a pen. Let's advertise a sale for a pen, right? But think about like a high ticket coach. Let's say you have you sell a ten thousand dollar coaching package. Would you ever think about running an ad for a coaching package that said, "Hey, my you know my name is Danny and I'm amazing. You should you should buy my coaching package. In fact, I'm going to give it to you at fifty percent off. Like that's how you lead. You would probably never think of doing something like that, right? It just doesn't make any sense. The first thing you would do is probably you know, talk about the user, like, or you'd say, you know, if you're a high ticket coach for, I don't know, you know, a sales coach, you know, do you, do you find yourself frustrated by, you know, having to make cold calls all day and old systems that just don't work, right? Make, maybe you would lead with a question like that in your ad, and then you would build some rapport or connection in the ad. You know, I found myself in the exact same position. In fact, for many years, like I listened to all the gurus and everything they said, and I found that None of it worked. It was data, you know, so you would you would tell a story and there would be a certain image that would convey that. So I'm not coming out and saying, hey, buy my buy my ten thousand dollar coaching package, right? Yet we tend to do that with physical products. Definitely. So what we're looking at really is that we've got to build the, the warmth towards the audience. You can't just go in cold is what we're saying. And obviously we're used to uh, searches intent on Amazon, whereas Facebook is disruptive advertising. It's very much like a billboard. If someone's going down the motorway and the billboard's there. We didn't ask them to put the billboard there. The billboard is there. And if we get to see it, we get to see it. And it's the same thing when they ads start to appear in our feeds. Although there's obviously a little bit of targeting going on, it doesn't mean that it's going to convert. It doesn't mean that someone's interested. So you need to find a way to step forward and warm that person to you before you start asking to part with some money is what you're saying. 
Yeah, and uh, I talk about this a lot as well, and and we can we can go into it. But there is independence and interdependence between the ad and wherever we're sending them. So we'll call that the landing page. Yeah. And landing page, most people are probably gonna when they hear that they probably think of a funnel, which is actually one of the most common places we send people after our ads. But landing page is just where they're going to go after they click. So whether it's your Shopify store, your Amazon listing, your, um, you know, a lead capture page, whatever it is, there's independence because those two things have a different job, but there's an interdependence as well. So, um, so but yes, it all we, starts talk, with that connection. Yeah. So are we talking congruency there? There's the congruency between the ad itself and the landing page you're talking about. Is that what you're saying? Um, Yes, there's definitely like a, we call it an ad scent, yeah. which basically is that idea. I think we've talked about this in the past, yeah. but um, you really can't bring it up enough. As it's literally down to the colors, the headline, the you know there has to be that congruency where it feels like it flowed naturally into an ad. Yeah. Uh, we've seen this over and over where if you have got you know you got an ad that has purple and green colors, and then you send them to somewhere where it's blue, blue. and yellow, yeah, like people will bounce yeah. because it just feels like wait. You know, this it feels suspicious, basically. But in addition to that, the ad, if we build that connection the right way in the ad, and it by connection, we're not talking about some, you know, deep connection, right? It's just enough intrigue where people are like, all right, I'll check it out. Well, so why you know, don't we this, why this don't section. we pick it apart from that point? Like what you're yeah. saying, let's start from that and then we can obviously go deeper into the question. The ad has one job. Uh, and it's, and I always ask people like, what, what's the purpose of the ad, right? Uh, whether if I'm doing a workshop or something, I'll ask and people say, oh, it's, you know, it's to get people to buy or to get, you know, to, uh, to get a, you know, to maximize ROI or to make sales or whatever, whatever, you know, all these responses will come up and every once in a while someone will get it. Like the ad has one job. It's to get a click. That's it. Uh, it, it, and that right there, if you can start thinking in terms of the the ad is intended to get a click, not to get a sale. That will change your whole perspective on how you write ads. So let's start with the headline then. Let's get into the headline. Obviously, is that, that and the visual are very key. So let's do, break down the headline first. Uh, the first thing we have to do is get their attention. Again, this is not to get a sale. It's just to get them to stop for a second, just to go, huh. Uh, and that's why I'm a firm believer, like most of your ad, the importance of your ad is the image. Mm -hmm. And the image, it's we're not looking for an image that's like red borders, dashed lines, things exploding. Uh, we we all we all try that, you know. We all try the meme style with you know, top third, bottom third, and all that. But generally, we just want an image that just resonates, kind of tells a story. Yeah. Like it's it pulls it pulls the reader in or pulls pulls the audience in that builds some intrigue there's a lot of different things you can do with images but well, why I would, don't we explore just quickly images give me some examples of you know whether it's shock value whether it's uh, a beautiful woman a good looking guy what what are some of the things have you seen that have worked in terms of getting that initial attraction grabbing that attention what we want is an image that tells a story mm -hmm. so if i sell if i sell coffee um yeah, maybe it, it also depends what my copy is going to be. Yeah. What kind of connection am I trying to build? Am I trying to play on the fact, on the fear that some people may have that, um, or let me actually do the more common one. Am I trying to build connection with how amazing it is to start a day with a, with a ice cold, cold brew, like a quality cold brew that's going to get my, my creativity going. Is that what, is that the connection I'm trying to build? Yeah. Or am I trying to build connection that, you know, there, it's important to drink organic coffee because there may be toxins in your coffee. Yeah, and is that the audience I'm targeting? Yeah. So, for so is it? Yeah, am, am I talking more of a fear base, yeah. or am I going more towards pleasure? Yeah. Uh, depending on that, that's going to influence the image, yeah. right? So, in, to so, give an example, let's just say we're looking to start the day, you know, afresh. You know, we want to have a good day. Is that maybe the image is uh, someone in their workout gear who's just finished a run? And in the shot, they're just getting their coffee. And then the, the, you've got a matching headline to work alongside of that. So what it's capturing here is that it's fresh, maybe um, energizing. You've done your run. You're starting your day. And it's some way that you're using the image in that sense is what you're talking about. 
Yeah. And if we're doing something with workout, then maybe I have, I have, um, I'm also using some interest targeting on people who are into fitness yeah. as well as coffee, right? Like I, yeah. I want to try to get, build that congruency with, between my interest image and story. Yeah. So, um, you know, what came to mind for me, just cause we've run this ad before is we're, we're kind of targeting more like the businessman, right? Yeah, yeah. Where it's like, you're seizing, seizing the day, like carpe diem type, you know, yeah type of image and you know, oh, you've got, you, maybe you don't, there, maybe there's no coffee in the image at all, mm. right? It's just, it, it tells a story that like we are, um, you know, we're, 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 we're seizing the day. Have you gone to the point with some of your clients who've got a little bit more budget to tailor these? Have you kind of written out like a, an outline of some sort of scripting for play, like planning these shots? So these location shots that are tie in with headlines and stuff. We have a whole routine we go, like, whole process we go through to script out, you know, seven to 10 different stories and what images would go with those and, and that process. But yeah, basically it comes down to knowing your avatar, right? Mm -hmm. This is again, old school marketing. We've talked about this a lot is understanding your avatars, hopes, dreams, fears, aspirations, desires. And again, going back to old, you know, copywriting greats like Ogilvy, mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, and, and Gene Schwartz is, you, the, the job of your product is not to create desire yeah. in your prospect. The job of your product is to take their existing hopes, dreams, fears, desires, and yeah. project it onto your product. Cool. That is what a good copywriter does. That's what a good advertiser does um, and a good marketer. So. so can we talk a little bit more about the copy now? Because we kind of discovered what we should do with the images. We want to get the congruency. We want to create feeling. We want to avoid stock images and stuff. How do we, you know, you want the image to pop. How do we get the copy to pop? What do we need to do? Give us some ideas of... You know, how many words should be a headline roughly? I know there's, you know, you've got, to, you've got to gather data to be sure. But what are some of the common things that you would do to get that copy to work with the image? Yeah, so just so everybody knows, uh, if you have a hard time writing headlines, you're not alone. <laughs> like I, I'll spend, we could spend a week writing one headline, mm. uh, especially for like a sales copy, like a, like a funnel, like sales copy uh, letter. Mm. It, it can take a long time because it literally is a whiteboard session of, you know, kind of sketching out different ones. Uh, but going back to what I said, the purpose of the headline is just one thing. Yeah. We've grabbed their attention with the image, right? The purpose of your headline. And when I say headline, that can mean different things to different people. In this context, we're saying the first line in your copy yeah. uh, on your ad. So if you imagine you have an ad, you have an image right at the top. There's some there's some room for text. Mm -hmm. um, that first line. So I don't know, just for some of you who are maybe watching, aren't as familiar with setting up ads. So we're talking just about that text, that first line. Yeah. And the purpose of that first line, just the way that the ad, the purpose is to get someone to click. Like we said, the purpose of that first line is just to get them to read the next line. Yeah. That's it. So we got to kind of hit them hard with that in the sense that we want something that is very, um, it's just very specific to a pain point they have, to a desire they have, or it elicits some curiosity. Yeah. Curiosity works. Curiosity headlines work very well because they get us to um, sort of read more because we're interested. So, uh, man, there's so many different strategies for writing headlines. Um, I believe what about a this sales thing? copy headlines a little bit different yeah. because we use like there's some formulas you can use kind of a how to without yeah. like how to whatever you want without whatever you don't want. That doesn't work as well with a Facebook ad. With a Facebook ad, you usually want to start with a question mm -hmm. um, or a statement that's like an obvious, like, yes, that's, you know, uh, no, nothing beats, nothing beats that, that, I don't know, um, nothing starting your day yeah. with energy, focus, and a clear vision of what you want to, of what you want to accomplish. Yeah. Or, okay. Or you like, could uh, you do a question, with, which is lacking energy, question mark, and then exactly. roll into the back end of your copy. I, exactly. And like nine times out of 10, we're going to use a question. I'll yeah. just, I'll just say that. I just don't want to, I don't want made, I don't want people to feel like, especially people like, who are listening to feel that they always have to write a question. That's it. We've yeah, had plenty of ads that do well with just a statement that hmm. is almost like, yeah, I agree. What, what about you know, this like, then? It, if people are struggling for headlines and they can't, Say, for instance, you know, like we're not visualizing the headline for the guys here, but how can we get them to um, 
to do the research by looking at other ads? Is there any little techniques that people should do to study others' ads and start to pinpoint what would possibly work for them and galvanize some ideas? One of the best things, <laughs> this is like not using a tool, but this is something that I do. When there's a niche that I'm getting into, uh, I go and like a bunch of pages, That's like brand saying, pages yeah. like in the niche. We, yeah. So, so what are yeah. some of the strategies so I can, can fill up use? my feed with, yeah. with their ads Great and idea. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like my, the way I do research on anything guys like this is, it's, it's not sexy, but this is the best advice I can give you because you're going to get a ton of content. Uh, if you're in a niche, you're in the coffee niche, right? Go out, subscribe to pick five, maybe five influencers in this space, subscribe to their email lists, uh, pick a few brands, subscribe to their newsletters, uh, pick those same brands, go on Facebook, like their pages, uh, comment on a few things just so you, you know, pick their most popular post, look at their most popular posts. What content is getting engagement? Um, if you're, if you want to go a step further, this is what we do as well. Go and actually buy products in their funnels. If they have, if they have offers, buy some other products, get their emails, look at their email sequences. Again, it's not the sexiest thing. It takes a little bit of time. Okay. So let's wrap up the three main points for the ad. Yeah, absolutely. So again, number one, uh, like we said before, don't, don't go straight for the, for the jugular <laughs> on the sale. Uh, we got to build connection first. First, let's get their attention with that ad. Next, let's build rapport in our copy. So we want to lead with that headline that just gets them to read the rest of the copy. And in that, and the rest of that copy, honestly, don't overthink this part. It's just about telling a story. Like you spent a lot of time figuring out what image you were going to use, who you were going to target. So if you're targeting people who are into fitness and need some coffee in the morning to get started to conquer their day, share a little bit of that in, in your copy. Like literally just a quick story, you know, it, it doesn't, don't, don't overthink it. All we're trying to do is build that connection from them never seeing us to realizing like our coffee, it's for fitness people. They want to, they want to get their day started right. If they want to, to learn more, to see if there's still availability for our offer that we have, click here. That's it. Just get them to click. So again, get their attention, build rapport and get them to click so we can send them to our landing page. Cool. So which brings us on to the next phase now. Let's uh, break down, we, we, you know, in this part of the discussion, let's look at sending them straight to the listing and then we can also talk to about the opt-in page. So let's look at some positive and negative to sending them to the Amazon listing. Yeah. So the, I mean, let's start with, I guess, the, the positives. The positives is Amazon, you know, and there's a lot of debate about this. I can tell you from experience, we've absolutely seen only good things. Amazon loves external traffic and why wouldn't they, right? So the positives, you're bringing outside buyers, you're paying to bring outside buyers into Amazon's world. Um, I don't know about you, but if I was, if I was Amazon, that would make me very, very happy. I'm happy to have you, you know, cover the front, the bill for that. So I guess that would be one of the negatives, but let's say positives. Amazon likes that. They like external traffic. Uh, I'm yet to see any issue with conversion rates being a problem. I know this is one of the big questions. Well, what if I send a bunch of non-converting traffic to my listing? Um, I haven't seen that ever be an issue. I know there's, in theory, it would make sense. Like, oh man, it's gonna, you know, I'm gonna go from 20% to, to, you know, 12% conversion rates. That that can't be good. There's an offset there, and I, from everything we've seen, it's never been an issue. But again, uh, by us doing a lot of that pre-frame and not clickbaity type stuff where we just get people to click with a pretty girl, uh, we're gonna pre-frame people. They know what they're gonna be uh, signing up for or clicking over to, so they're more likely to convert anyway. So you shouldn't see this massive drop off in conversions anyway, but it's it hasn't been an issue in everything that we've tested uh, or you know the data we've seen. Um, other benefits, yeah, I mean, right now, we're all looking for ways to get traffic. So it's not just that Amazon likes the outside traffic, it's just you're getting traffic period to your listing. If someone goes to Amazon, conversion rates on Amazon are amazing. So even if, if a few they're on Amazon, chances are there's a credit card. Yeah. What, so, what's what, that? So, so what I'm saying is even if you are pushed down in, with a few sessions with a bit of wafty traffic, 
you can normally recover because your conversion rates are pretty good anyway on Amazon. It's only when you get crazy and you're sending bot traffic like a thousand visits where it starts to really become a problem, which I don't want to kind of um, go off track here, but if I can just add a side note, do you mind quickly having a chat on your interpretation of the whole bot traffic thing? What what is your take on that? Well, I just... I just don't, I mean, we don't, I just don't mess with it. Um, and I think that, I don't know. I I think there's just a lot of stuff that people are doing like this idea of, Oh, it's gray hat. Listen, man, it's either white or it's black. Like the idea of gray hat, like if you, if you're questioning it and if you're really concerned about your account, then consider it black hat and don't do it. Um, I would just, I I know it sucks because everyone else is, you know, almost feel like you have to, you have to do this gray area to compete, yeah. but you know, once you get shut down, you're shut down. Um, so I just, I stay away from it all. Yeah, no, no, I, I don't blame you. And it's, it's quite interesting because it's intriguing to wanting to understand what people are doing. And it, it's another form of manipulation, but it's literally, it's dead traffic. It's just bots. So it's not human traffic that's going there. So there isn't any real benefits, but people have shot videos and posted them to show, look, actually, it's juicing rankings or in their interpretation from the video of where they've gone from position X to position num- you know, position Y or whatever. But like you, I'm like, sounds like a nice idea, but ultimately it's like you're putting your whole account at risk and you really don't know, like, are Amazon that stupid? I don't think so. I'm sure, you know, if Google Analytics can identify bot traffic, I'm sure Amazon exactly. with their proprietary tools can tell a difference sorry exactly 100 percent. okay so and and the one of the other flip sides that we um we struggle with we can't measure the data can we it's not like we've got access to amazon back end that's one downside isn't it but there seems to be a lot of upsides sending traffic to the listing so yeah can you give me it, some examples not products that like to and, show people's products but give me some examples of where you've run Facebook ads and you've seen those changes. Maybe it's a new listing. Maybe it's an existing listing. Do you mind giving us a couple of case studies, if you like? Yeah, yeah. One, one, one point, though, I want to make really quick that I forgot to mention because yeah. um, we changed topics is on the Amazon listing hmm. to keep in mind is once you send the traffic to your listing, Amazon now starts retargeting. Yes. And they have their own retargeting. So that's why when you go visit right? You go visit a Bluetooth mouse, then all of a sudden this thing is in your Facebook feed. Yeah. Um, so just, it's another benefit. That's that. a brilliant benefit. Yeah. I know back on subject. So sending traffic to the listing, we've identified that it's good for in terms of juicing and helping with rankings. What have you seen in terms of a case study? Give me an example, an old listing or a new listing where it's worked for you. Yeah. So the best is just during that honeymoon period. That's like when, so for relaunches or for initial launches, but initial launches, if you can get your traffic strategy nailed down before you actually go live, um, cause you have this grace period. I think we all, we all agree now that we, we know that there's about a two week honeymoon period where Amazon doesn't, they don't really know how well your product's going to do. So they sort of give you the benefit of the doubt. And it's critical because, um, I've talked to Casey Goss about this from viral launch a lot is that everyone thinks in terms of sales velocity, but sales history is really, um, imp- that's like more important than anything. That's why you can, you can do a lightning deal and you get that spike, right. And then it falls off. So, uh, basically starting out right out of the gate with positive sales history, like you can kind of ride that wave and you show Amazon right from the beginning, like, Hey, this is a great product. It sells well. So, that is essentially where we've seen a difference in how our stick rate after launch is if we drive a lot of traffic. So we we get every part of this, tra- the AMS side, we get the sponsored product side, uh, any influencer traffic we're going to do, uh, Facebook traffic, like we get that whole strategy lined up. And basically when we go live, we just, we, 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 we flood the, uh, the listing um, right out of the gate. Fantastic. Now it sounds good. I mean, I, I hadn't really thought about it in the sense of, great you can send third party traffic the other downside may be considered is that that they don't buy from your listing they buy it from elsewhere but with the retargeting and other options like that there are benefits but it's all built into the back end isn't it even though you can't measure it it's the overall impact that it's having on your listing so that's good um so let's talk about sending them to the opt-in page i know that's your favorite area to go isn't it pretty much 
if you follow me, you know that I'm a big believer in making Amazon a spoke in the wheel, not the entire wheel, and for us building our own sandbox. So that all starts with understanding the customer acquisition process. Yep. Any business has to understand how to build, uh, how to create leads and turn those leads into sales. So uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of the opt-in. I think that I'm still, what I like about it, it's a, it's a nice middle ground for those who are purely Amazon sellers, for them to start building up their own email list. And kind of like we do with community pages on Facebook, start bridge marketing them off of Amazon into their world. So even though Amazon is the big appeal, we have a little pit stop where we can capture an email using a ClickFunnels page or any other platform you want to use. Uh, we can capture an email. We can do some creative things on the thank you pages actually where we can offer some upsells that they can then use on Amazon with multiple products or give them a coupon for another item. Um, so they, the transaction still happens on Amazon. So you're going to get the Amazon ranking and all of that uh, and you're going to get the, the juice in Amazon. But there's that little pit stop where we get an email and now they're like in our world. We bridge them over into our world. Now we can start building rapport. We can get them into our email sequences. And ultimately, uh, I want the sales to start happening off Amazon. I want it to happen either in my funnel or in my Shopify store. Yeah. Okay. So let's just uh, break this down then. Obviously, this is the, the we've we've covered earlier on that the, we've grabbed the attention. We've built the rapport. We've got them yep. to click. Now let's build out a landing page. Let's talk about this opt-in page in the sense of what goes into it. We understand there's congruency, but what, what goes into the anatomy of a landing page for you? Yeah. So again, think about what it was that got their attention. Mm -hmm. You know, that main, that main headline, that main question, that's what got them to read the next line. And that's what got them to ultimately click. So that's, that's the starting point is whatever you led with, whatever your story was, and that whatever that headline was, a lot of times you can use the exact same headline in your landing page. Yeah, it's It worked there, it's gonna work here. We see this with, uh, like, if you get a, if you have a really good headline in your ad, use that as an email, as an email subject line. If it's working in one place, it'll most likely work somewhere else. So you're keeping that ad sent going, you're building congruency, and if you're not gonna use the exact same word for word, keep the same theme. If we're talking about lacking energy, mm -hmm. then the next line is how to boost your energy without taking pills, potions, and, and you know, and, or, or, or <laughs> we like to have fun with headlines. So, you know, or being held hostage by your, by your, you know, pharmacist or something like that. Like we'll do something kind of fun, but uh, the idea is lack energy over here. We can use our how to without style headline. Yeah. And again, same thing that headline is just meant to get them to read the next line. Yeah. If you're going to do a discount, so if you noticed, uh, I don't know if you caught it, but before when I said in, in the text of the ad, we said to check availability, click here. Mm -hmm. So congruency over here, uh, you know, great news. We, you know, as we still have X units available as a part of our huge national promotion, something yeah. like that. Um, Give them a reason why there's a discount. Everyone's always wondering what's the catch. Okay, well let's let's address it. Mm -hmm. It's a national promotion. It's a huge relaunch. Um, you know, we'll, we you want to make sure you address that. Don't. There's no point in hiding from the questions they have already. Let's let's call them out. Let's shed light on them so people feel at ease and they're like, all right, this isn't some scammer. It's is actually maybe a good product. Let me go ahead and try it. And the same with the image. Same as the product image in the not product, but the same image that is in the advert will appear on the landing page or a continuation uh, from that not image. Not typically. Not no? not typically. Yeah. So we will keep the same theme. Like if it's a workout theme, like we, I think you had said yeah. like a gym. You know, someone's in the gym drinking their coffee. Uh, we'll keep the same theme. But generally, the images will now be product focused because the same way that the ad was to get them to click. Now, the landing page, the funnel, wherever they're going, the purpose of that is to get them to convert, to buy, to opt in, whatever it is. Yeah, cool. And then what about uh, in terms of setting up conversion tracking and things like that? Because I think people find it quite fiddly. And you were bringing up the pixel in the, in the very first episode. Yeah. So, so talk us about through the setup of that and the do's and don'ts. Um, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, like, so how do we track conversions? It's, it's going to be through our pixel. Yeah. Uh, probably can't get into a lot of the, the details, but it's really not that difficult. Yeah. Um, high level, essentially uh, Facebook pixel. It's just a little, little snippet of code. 
Uh, and for those of you who don't like code, it don't worry. It's not like you don't have to code anything. You literally will copy paste it. Cool. Sounds good. Okay, let's wrap that there. Um, so how can people reach you? We know about the Ecom Underground. What's the Facebook page if people are searching or the URL for it? Yeah, so two options. Um, if they go to the if they go to Facebook, search ECOM, Ecom yeah. Uh, underground, they'll find us, and it's a private group. But click, click join, and either myself or one of the admins will let you in and get you started in the conversation. Uh, another option, you can actually go to joinecomunderground.com. <laughs> <laughs>